Hello everyone, digital citizens in the EDTP 580 class. This is your weekly preview. You will be getting one of these every week for the next seven weeks as we work our way through our EDTP 580 class. So this weekly preview is for Monday, May the 11th. Monday, May the 11th is the official start of the class, but the good news for you is the official ending of the class is August the 11th. In other words, you got all summer to do this. So the way I'm going to work it is, and by the way, I'm Steve Swan, your instructor for this class, the Director of Instructional Technology in the College of Education. The way we're going to work this class is I will be here Every Monday for the next seven Mondays, starting on the 11th, I will be here to take you through the different modules, which I'll show you in just a second here. If you wish to join me, you may join me every Monday for the next seven Mondays at 1 p.m. right here. Now, if you can't make it, don't worry about it. Everything will be recorded. And as soon as I get done with this one today, I'll have a link right here that says EDTP 580 Blackboard Collab Recordings. You will also receive an announcement from me that will contain the link to every class recording and every class announcement. You will not have any problem keeping up with this class. This will probably be one of the best and easiest classes you've ever had, and I hope you enjoy it. Now, right off the bat, let's look at this folio tech thing. So I have the folio tech information right here. I will show you where the folio tech link is in just a second. And that is for, it is my understanding, that it's for your hat alone. And we'll show you the hat here in just a minute. Um, here's the thing though I really want you to look at. It's a little blurb about taking an ongoing class and how it's different and all of that. Here's so what I want you to pay attention to right down here. It says, I freely give you my text number at 502-457-2937. Use it. If you have a question about class, if you're not sure about what something is, if you're not understanding what the requirement is, get on your phone and send me a text. The first time you send me a text, if you'll just say, this is so-and-so from the EDTP 580 class, just so I know it's you and I can put you in my contacts. And that way, every time you send me a new text, it'll pop up with your name and I'll know who it is instead of trying to figure it out. Okay. Now, let's do a quick dive into the modules so you can see what how this all works. And then, as you can see, right here below the module, this is the link to the folio tech. I would ask that you go ahead and click on that link and get yourself registered in for our class. And now let's dive through the modules. We're gonna be using uh, a system, sort of an e-portfolio, if you will. And we're gonna be using something called Google Sites. Um, you, if you are a classroom teacher and you are using Google Classroom, then Google Sites isn't too far out of your bailiwick. I want to thank one of our students who went ahead and created her Google Sites for the class. And when she let me know that, we went ahead and double checked to make sure that her Google Sites created on her JCPS computer within JCPS domain that I could still get to it, which was good news because it makes it a lot simpler to do this. So we're going to create a Google Sites and that's where you're going to put things that we create in our class. So what is our class? Well, we're going to start off with Understanding digital citizenship the old way. I call it thou shalt not. This is the old way of let's be careful out there. Don't give away this. Don't tell that. Don't use uh, Amazon. You know, all the things where it's like be careful. And all that's true. But what we have to realize is as teachers is the days of being able to say thou shalt not are long over with. We need a new way. And this is where our book that we're going to be using, The Participatory Digital Citizenship, comes in. Uh, the reason why I like Metzen's book, her Digital Citizenship in Action, is 
this quote right here. In order for your students to become participatory digital citizens, they're going to need some space to practice under your mentorship. And that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to take a different look at digital citizenship. We're going to be looking at it in a, in a different way that we can engage kids and help them understand this world that they live in as opposed to thou shalt not. So that'll be our first module. It takes a little dive into that. We're going to be playing with a lot of cool tools. Um, as you can see, one of the things that I'm, go I'm going to do all through this class is give you lots and lots and lots of choices. So for this first module, we're going to be looking at something called Padlet and Answer Garden and Mimimeter and Google Forms. We're going to put all those out there for you to play with and then decide which one you want to use. For module four, we're going to be looking at acknowledging student voice. Again, we're going to be using quite a few different ways for you to demonstrate your understanding of what this means. We're going to be looking at something called a picture chart, looking at something called a make beliefs comics, or looking at something called Storybird or Book Creator. Again, all of these are choices. You don't have to do all of them. Just pick one that makes you kind of go, huh, I like this. And then we're going to dive into something um, about building digital communities. Uh, in her book, this is where she talks about uh, digital uh, social discourse, and we take a look at Twitter. Now, we all know what a cesspool Twitter has become. And if that worries you, our Twitter that we're going to set up will be specific to your class. Um, it won't be related to any other nonsense that goes on out there in the Twitterverse. If that does bother you, fine. I, I totally understand. What we're going to do then is look at something else, Pinterest. And if you haven't gotten into the Pinterest verse, are you in for a, a wonderful surprise? I love Pinterest. It's one of my favorite um, online uh, sites. Students will be given an opportunity to explore the gray areas of free speech and participation in digital spaces. I think that's a great way of looking at uh, how this stuff works. Uh, the next one we're going to look at is networking, making meaningful connections. This one last year was a huge hit with the students. They loved all of the opportunities to look at building a global collaboration network, especially through their Google Classrooms. And boy, we've got a bunch of them here. In fact, if you don't even like what's here, we can jump on in to where the global collaboration uh, ideas from Common Sense Education. And we love Common Sense because it's based upon real educators, safe sites, all that kind of good stuff. Um, and this link will take you to all of those. Big, this is a, was a big favorite among uh, our students last summer. And then finally, here's your hat. How about that. Here's the hat. Here's everything you need to know about the hat. We're going to be using something called Animoto. We're going to create an Animoto that is a PSA about an aspect of digital citizenship. You may use any aspect that you want. If you want to go with a thou shalt not, Digital citizenship idea, uh, feel free, because it's your idea. Uh, the PSA is, you know what a PSA is, public service announcement. Uh, needs to be 60 to 90 seconds long. Of course, I'll walk you through how to make it in Animoto. And one of the cool things about the new version of Animoto that we'll be using is in the Animoto blocks, they call them blocks, I would call them slides, you have the ability to uh, record your own voice. So not only can you have pictures and music and text, you now can have your own voice. And I hope uh, when we do it together, you'll see what I'm talking about. Because if you look at this, what we're looking for here is will be a title. What is your audience and what perspectives do you come from? There's the rubric for the hat. Uh, assignments are located up here on the left hand side. Right there. And as you can see, every assignment. Uh, comes with its own rubric. So if you need to be looking at what it is that I'm expecting out of you for each one of these modules, there it is right there. Okay. Don't let it scare you. This is something I think you will find very, very enjoyable. All right. 
before I leave you, let's make sure we all understand how to use Collaborate. Because if you're going to join me in synchronous, meaning you're going to be there at the time that class can be, which will be 1 o'clock on Mondays, if you want to be there synchronously, you have to join me with Collab. And the way you do it is you come in on the left-hand side, you click on this little linky here that says EDTP 580 Blackboard Collaborate, and then you click on the title of the session, and then you click on join. I'm not going to do that because I'm actually inside of Collaborate right now. And what it'll do is it'll come back and it'll say, wait a minute, you're already here. You can't, and then it, it just gets all messed up. So I'm not going to go that far, but this is what you do. You click on join session and then you'll see, you'll see my screen, just like you're seeing my screen right now. And you can be there with me in synchronous time. If you need to be there, just to ask your question, you go right ahead. Asynchronously, all of these are recorded. And then, as I said, there'll be a link right under here, right under here, that will be where the link to the recordings are. You drop in, you watch the recordings. I will also send you a link to the recordings and announcements. Um, those announcements are linked to a YouTube channel where all the recordings are kept as well as in here. They're kept in both places. Some students tell me they like being able to just take their phones and turn on the recording from their phone, and then they just set it down and listen to me talk while they watch what's on the screen in front of them, because I try to be very, very tight to what is on the screen in front of you, and then walk you through how to use the various tools that we will be using. You will hear me say this all through the next seven weeks. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, 502-457-2937. Do not hesitate for one second to reach out and contact me. And as always, stay safe. Take care of each other. We're going to get through this, and we'll all be back together again probably in the fall. I look forward to working with you. Thank you. And I will see you Monday at 1 o'clock if you want to be there. You do not have to be there. Bye.